My son, we need to celebrate because your brother was lost, his son. He was dead, but now he comes to life. As I said at the beginning of the Mass today, today we are going to see the most powerful mercy that God has for us. God created us in his image. And even when we sin to the sin of Adam and Eve, he make a plan to send his son to restore us to that unit, to that reconciliation with him and bring us to our destination with him in heaven. In the first reading today, we heard God speak to Moses. Moses had went on Mount Sinai, and for 40 days and for the night he was with the Lord. And while the Lord was speaking to him and direct him and give him the command, he said to him, go down, because my people has abandoned me. My people has deserted me. They throw themselves in front of an ox, eat hay, the God of fertility. And now I intend to do what I intend to do to those who disobey me, and that is to destroy them. A good shepherd is a shepherd who does not go along with the destruction of his sheep. But he pleads with God and says, Lord, you are the one who made the promise to our forefathers. You brought these people out of Egypt, and now you're going to make yourself the laughing stock of the Israelites, of the uh, Egyptians. You destroy them here. Have mercy on them. And in the gospel today, we find Jesus speak to us about that same mercy. A man had hundred sheep, one get lost. He put the ninety-nine in a safe place, and off he goes to search for the one he lost. Once he found it, he put on his shoulders and he bring his friends to celebrate, because now he was lost his father. The same thing is with the woman who lost a precious coin. After she searched around her house and swept it diligently, and she found it, she bring her friends and rejoice with them. The same thing happened when the son, the prodigal son, returned home. How the father put a group a big feast and welcome his son back, because he who was lost is found. I would like to make a little point on that last parable. The first step was not the father. Do you, do, you, do you get that? The first step was not the father. The first step was the son. He come to his senses. How many people in my father's house have more than I have? And here I am with the pigs. Jesus speak about pigs, that are a great insult to the Jewish people. Because pigs were not part of their menu. And uh, you know, everyone who knows Jewish people, their children really succeed. Or doctors or lawyers, they are not tenders of, sheep, of, of pigs. So that was a great insult for him to go and hire himself and the people who have swine. After he did so, and they, he comes to the father and say those words, the father said, bring him the finest robe. Because now he is not anymore stranger, but now he wore the, the cloth of the tribe. He belongs to us again. And remember the story of the shams. They shunned him. Those people who did it goes against their wishes. They are shunned. Give them the robe. Remind you of the robe of baptism. Eh? Give him the ring. Because now he has authority to give orders. In the, in the, uh, 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 the times ago, our holy fathers, our kings, they didn't have the stand that we have today. They have a ring with their coat of arms. They put it in a wax, in the in melted wax, and 
and they see it in the parchment or the paper of their authority. Many of you know that the first thing that they destroy when the Holy Father die is his record. Because that is the power of his authority. So no document will be published with the idea that he has signed them and so forth. And then put the sentence on his feet. All the slaves were free. But not have no sentence. He's not a slave. He's not going to be treated like one of my slaves. But he is my son. <laughs> then I'd like to go in that second reading today because I think that second reading did really sum it up. But Paul really had in his heart as he opened his heart to his beloved friend Timothy. He said, Timothy, Timothy, I know God's mercy. Because before I was converted, I was arrogant. I was blaspheming. I blasphemed the name of Jesus. I want to destroy anyone who mentioned that name. But then when the grace of God that God has for me was bestowed on me, I was chosen to be his vehicle to bring his message. Not only he forgave me, but he gave me a job. And that job is to build this kingdom. So I know that that mercy was given to me because I was treated well by the Lord. And I wish that that same mercy, I will pass it on to those that I have been entrusted. And because of this, I give him thanks for all the blessings that he bestowed on me, for the forgiveness that he gave me, and also that he now allowed me that one day I will be with him forever. And for this, I am so grateful. My dear people, today we have people who are afraid of the sacrament of penance. And they are afraid of the sacrament of penance, not because, but because there is something fundamentally wrong. And that is, we lost the idea of sin. We do not anymore consider that our action can be sinful. Because we take for granted that we make our own laws. And we are the one who determine and really continue to live in that fashion. And by doing so, we are denying the very essence of forgiveness. What does sin do? Sin is offense against God. And by that sin, I don't offend only God but I destroy the relationship with others. You see it in the family today. You see it in society. You see it in the church. Don't think the vision in the church coming from, it comes from one, and one important factor, and that is sin. Sin destroy our social and collective and personal relationships. And because of that, we are the ones who are going to suffer. That's why people do not go to confession. Not because they don't believe in it. Because they believe that they have no sin. I mean, you talk to people today, say, Father, what I do, I do nothing. Because everything is justified. We become so materialistic, we become so involved in the society we live that everything that we do has no offense to God. And that is why the sacrament of penance has been not very well receptive. So what is the scripture telling me today? The scripture today is telling me to be sincere. That's all it tells me. To really be honest with myself. Because the honesty that I have for myself is going to issue forth that I am going to remember 
But my actions, my words have caused division, has caused pain, has caused hurt. And because of that, I need to really make up for it. Because my sin, even if I make it in the private of my room, is not just me and God, but I bring down even others. When I, as a member of the church, I continue to insist in my sinfulness, I really bring the church down. Because the church is supposed to be the bride of Christ without no blemish. Beautiful, ready to meet her. And what I am doing as a member of that church, I am bringing the church 